Um, my name is Kim Danke. I am your Fast Track instructor, and we have this one week class that is designed to help you figure out how to live the Shibboleth lifestyle. As you know, anything that you want to do successfully, you know, you have to continue learning it, continue applying it, continue um, just moving forward with it. But this is your beginning week. And so what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna share a PowerPoint with you. We're gonna go over those things. This PowerPoint will be available to you in a link on the website under this video that's gonna be, it's actually already there. There's one already there. And then um, we've got, it will also be in a group. If you are not in the Shibboleth New Member Fast Track group, on Facebook, you're gonna to wanna to search for that. It's really easy, I don't need to put the link in there for you because it's super easy. Shibboleth New Member Fast Track, and it'll pull me off this. If you remind me in the end, I can do that, but hey, Kim from Kennesaw, awesome, awesome. I'm Kim from Kennesaw, so that's good. I hope I can meet you soon. We can be two Kims from Kennesaw. Um, so I'm gonna share my PowerPoint with you, and the most important thing in my mind when I'm teaching this is to help you understand the terminology. We just want you to understand the terminology that you are going to hear when you hear Travis teach or Jason teach, or if you are reading some of the posts on the Facebook pages, you're gonna to wanna to know those terms, though that terminology. The terminology that are used in the little uh, videos, the fast track videos and everything, so that's what we're gonna do. But you know what I call tonight? I call the fast track and everything that we give you, I call this a success system. It's a success system. You have to have a system to be successful. And this, we're laying it, laying it out for you tonight, all right? And you can start applying this tomorrow. There's no reason that you have to like, uh, let me learn the whole program before I get started. That's a delay tactic. We don't want to do that. We want to jump in with all the bits and pieces that we do understand and ask questions about the ones we don't understand. Oh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I wanna tell you that this is a lifestyle, not a diet the lifestyle. A diet, the first three letters in the word diet are die. Not many people stick with them for very long. They're usually very, very restrictive. Uh, we have certain ways that we eat, but it's really not hardly restrictive at all. Okay, so we're gonna go through these slides and I'm just gonna hit the basics because that's all we're trying to do tonight, just give you a lifestyle overview. So the basics are, we have two modes in Shibboleth. You are either in weight loss mode or maintenance mode. Now, all nutrition is situational, and these two situations are different. If you're in weight loss mode, that's a different nutritional situation than a person who is in maintenance. They're in a different nutritional situation. So based on you might just hear that over time. A nutritional situation, you have you can do different things, okay, in each one of those situations. So we got weight loss and maintenance. In my mind, there are three differences between weight loss and maintenance. Because once you've learned the foundation of this program, that is what you're gonna be doing for the rest of your life, okay? You're gonna be applying that for the rest of your life. But there are three differences between these two modes. One is the number of holidays that you get to use in a calendar month. Two is simply how you eat fruit. And three is your mindset. By the time you get to maintenance, you need to have this down that this is going to be a lifestyle. Yeah, a lot of people when they get started, treat it like a diet because that's all they really know how to do. But this is a lifestyle. I don't diet. This is what I choose to do every day. And it works. Believe me, it works. I lost 50 pounds last year. Actually, in September, it'll be one year that I have kept that 50 pounds off. And I lost that 50 pounds in about five months. Um, so it's, it's, it works and it's uh, sustainable, which is important. There are two types of days on Shibboleth. There's a perfect day or there is a holiday. A perfect day is a day where you are meeting every component of the success system. You're meeting every component of what we call the Shibboleth 
or shibboleth shield. And we'll hit on that shibboleth word just a second. And then the, uh, the a holiday is a day where you are not meeting some component of the shibboleth shield. It's that simple. Now, if depending on the membership level that you have, you, you might have different options for perfect days, but just know that those are days that you can advance into if you choose to, as you continue to live this lifestyle. But this week, we're just focused on a perfect day or a holiday. I also want you to know that you may have done programs before where they called it a cheat day. We do not call it a cheat day. We are not cheating when we are just eating food that's not on the right program or doing something that's not a perfect day. We're not cheating. We're having a holiday. We're doing something special. We're doing something different. Cheating also has a negative connotation to it. So I, I don't want to do anything that would make us think uh, negatively about uh, things we're doing. So we want to make sure that we don't consider that a cheat day. It's a holiday. How many holidays are allowed? When you are in weight loss mode, you can use up to six days in a calendar month that you can call a holiday. And that would mean that you're not meeting some component of the shibboleth shield. Once you get into maintenance, you can use up to 12 holidays in a calendar month. And here's the caveat, as long as those other, let's just say 18 days uh, roundabout are truly perfect days, you will maintain that weight loss success that you've had. So in weight loss mode, remember it's a different nutritional situation. You're trying to reach a goal. So you can use up to six holidays in a calendar month. In maintenance, you could do up to 12. How do I have a perfect day? You follow the shibboleth shield. Okay, now you've kind of heard me say this word two different ways, shibboleth and shibboleth. Shibboleth is the Hebrew pronunciation of it back in the book of Judges. And at that point in time, it was a password. And if these certain groups of people didn't say the word right, they didn't you know, get let in, and I heard they get their head cut off, but we won't do that, okay. Um, but Travis, our founder, he is you know, a country boy. He says, I call it shibboleth. So that's where that came from. But what I would really like for you to do in the Shibboleth new member Fast Track group on Facebook, I've got some announcements that are kind of pinned at the top of the group. There is a video in there called The Origins of Shibboleth. Really want you to watch that video because it's important for you to hear how the name came about and where Travis's heart is. So I really want you to watch that. But I say Shibboleth most every other time, but Shibboleth Shield just rolls off my tongue easier and that's why I say that. But after you have had two perfect days following the shibboleth shield, your body is in a state that we call EFB. EFB stands for efficient fat burning. Many people over the years have tried to burn fat, but it just wasn't in an efficient way and it just didn't happen for them or it happened so slowly that you gave up and it's frustrating. If you follow this success system, you will efficiently burn fat. And EFB became my three favorite letters last year. And they're still my three favorite letters. I love to be an EFB because EFB helps me maintain that weight loss. But efficient fat burning, doesn't that sound better than inefficient fat burning? Yeah, let's efficiently burn that off. All right, there are five components to the shibboleth shield. Water, journaling, combinations, portions, and timing and timing. Component number one of the shibboleth shield is that you've got to drink your water. You need to drink at least at a minimum half a gallon of water a day. That was that's just 64 ounces. Now your goal and if you can get there please go for that gallon. Be shooting for that gallon okay and that's up to that's 128 ounces. If you end up going more you can but um, but your minimum is 64 ounces and you could shoot for that gallon, all right? It's really important. 
if you have water coming into your body, you are going to flush out fat and waste. Water in, fat out, water in, waste out. So a dehydrated body will not efficiently give up fat or waste, and we need to be getting rid of both of those things. So we've got to get our water in. It's ultra, ultra important. And let me just tell you, if you don't get it in, it's not a perfect day. So I laughed in class one night in our in-person class, and I said, if you go up the stairs and you're going to bed and you realize, oh my goodness, I only had 63 ounces of water today, um, you probably wouldn't, but I make this joke to keep the integrity of the program strong. Go to the bathroom sink, turn on that water, cup your hand and get another ounce in, okay? So, and I say that because the, 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 the stronger you hold yourself, with the integrity of the program, the better it's gonna work for you, the better results you're gonna have. What we're trying to do is help you get those results. So, so let's get our water in. And then component number two of the shield is to journal everything that you eat. There are no idle bites on planet Shibboleth, okay? So now that you've joined Shibboleth, you are a citizen of planet Shibboleth and there's no idle bites here. It goes in your mouth, you write it down, okay? You write it down. Now, I know we have technology these days where you can take a picture and do things like that. You can do that as well. And I could show you over the course of this week how to do that, but you've got to journal daily. This component is huge. It is so important because it helps you live a more aware life and it helps you be very conscious of what you were doing rather than unconsciously eating things, which we've all done. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> but if you bite it, you write it. If you nibble it, you scribble it. If you drink it, you ink it. If you hog it, you log it. That's my hog trough. Yeah. If you hog it, you log it. Okay, so if you eat it, if it goes in here, take a picture so that it's quick and easy and you don't forget anything, especially, excuse me, <coughs> especially if um, you, you're, you're busy and you just don't have time to write it right then, you could do that at the end of the day. And I also want to point out to you that journaling takes three minutes. I mean, maybe five, but let's just say it takes five. Five times seven is 35 minutes. 35 minutes in a day where you have 10,800, I think, or 10,080 minutes in a week, and we're asking you for 35 to journal your food, it is worth it, I promise you. You do not want to let this part slide. Okay, component number three of the Shibboleth Shield is eating properly combined meals. We're going to eat in a way that controls insulin, which is also known as the fat bus. So properly combined meals keep away the fat bus. And we call it the fat bus because of the, um, the action that insulin takes when it is also mixed in your body with fat lipids. And we're gonna go over that in just a second because I was really wowed by this information. This information is very, um, it was uh, very eye-opening, very eye-opening because, I mean, I just had no idea. It's very scientific, and so that actually is what made the difference for me. I went, wow, I don't want that to happen in my body. If I don't want that to happen in my body, I better not do that. So it really made an important impact on me, and I hope it does for you too. Component number three is so big and important that we're gonna do another slide on this in just a few minutes, but tomorrow night's webinar is one whole hour on that. Okay, so, um, so don't worry if you don't catch all this tonight. Component number four of the shield is portion control. Now, portion control is what most people think of anytime they wanna lose weight, they think, I need to eat less, all right. That is very important, that is very important, but it's not the number one way to weight reduction. The number one way to weight reduction is the insulin control, but you really do need to portion it, okay? You do have to combine that with the portion control. So the portion part is about being in a calorie deficit. 
if you happen to be sitting there taking notes, please write this down because I'm going to tell you some things tonight that I'm going to ask you tomorrow night so that it can really be helping you learn um, the information that you need to know. One pound of fat has 3,500 calories in it, 3,500 calories. So in order to lose one pound of fat, you've got to be in a calorie deficit of 3,500 calories. So that's why your portions are very, very important. But we supercharge our portion control with the addition of that controlling insulin because we don't want to be gaining new fat while we're trying to burn fat. It doesn't work like that. So we've got to control the insulin to control the fat storage and we got to control the portions to get into that calorie deficit. So how do you eat properly combined meals? Well, what you do is you eat from a smaller plate, a six to eight inch plate. When I say an eight inch plate, I'm not meaning the two inch rim around the edge, just the little portion in the middle. But I also want to say that no matter what size plate you have, the two hand rule trumps any size plate. So if you're a restaurant and they bring it on a really big plate, you're still gonna portion control with your two hands. We carry our two hands, we, we carry our two hands, we carry our measuring tools with us everywhere we go because we take our hands with us everywhere we go. I have never focused in this program on calorie counting. I haven't focused on weighing or measuring or anything like that. Now, that's not to say that when you get to those five, 10 last pounds that you might not need to look at those things to get them off, we might. But in the beginning, you don't really need to worry about that. So what we do, see I've moved, I don't know if you can see me depending on your device, okay, but I've moved my thumbs out of the way and I have put my pointer fingers, you know, my hands are flat, and I put my pointer fingers together where there's no space. See how there's no space? No space. And then I lay the, my hands down over my food. And as long as my food cannot be seen around my hands and it's no thicker than the thickest part of my hand, then I've portion controlled my food. I also like to teach you to use your hands. Like this could be your protein source. This could be your fibrous carb source. Or if you're doing the addition of an also an energy carb, your energy carb would be here, your fibers carb would be here, your protein source would be here. So we can use our um, we can use our hands as another visual of how to measure food out. Now we've just gone over water. That's easy. That's a no-brainer. You can start getting water in tomorrow. There's no excuse on that. Journaling, you can start writing down what you're eating tomorrow, even if it's not the right thing. Because if you write down something that isn't properly combined, we can look at that for you and say, hey, this is what you would need to do to make that approved. So write down what you're, you're eating. You can start that tomorrow. Combinations, we're gonna go over that. And I'm sure you can find some things in your, in your house uh, or you can go to the grocery store tomorrow and you can get that started. Portions, you can start tomorrow. You can start tomorrow. Those four, those must be met to say that you're having a perfect day. Okay, so water journaling, eating in a way that controls insulin, which we call combinations and portion control. Those must be met in order to say that you're having a perfect day. Component number five of the shield is called timing, and it is there for optimization. Optimization. So there's good, better, and best in this option. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what everything that you can do for a day is, but then you have to remember that we're trying to stop grazing and some other things. So you have to adjust according to what you're trying to accomplish and in how quickly you're trying to accomplish it. Accomplish it. So you can do up to three meals a day and they do need to be four to six hours apart. So one of our problems is that we're really never given our body any time to digest food. We're constantly grazing, putting a little bit more in, a little bit more in, a little bit more in. Well, that's not efficient for fat burning. It's also not good for our digestive system. So we wanna space our eating episodes out four to six hours. So you could do up to three meals a day. Now, Travis, he's, he's gonna take you to an even more advanced place. So you're gonna hear him call 
you, he's going to say that you should have three eating episodes in a day. And if that happens to be three meals, that's fine. Could be two meals and a snack. Could be two meals and freebies. Travis says you should just have three eating episodes in a day. What I'm going to do is tell you that that would be the absolute best for timing. That would be the best. But sometimes we need something else. We have to have ways to continue to be successful, even if we want to eat just a little something else. Okay, so we know that we need to make this program practical. I mean, we are real people living lives, different things happen, and we need to make sure that we can utilize other things. Plus, we are fighting mental weakness. We are. We are. Now, I found that one of the things that I have loved over this past year and a half that I've been with Shibboleth is that exercising my self-discipline muscle has become a joy, has become a real joy. And I hope that it can get that way for you too, to be able to exercise that self-discipline muscle. I do it multiple times a day. I battle in my head multiple times a day, and then I just choose to use that, that self-discipline muscle. So it's ongoing. It's an ongoing process. But in moments of mental weakness, you can utilize things that we call freebies. Freebies are not going to have hardly any glycemic impact on your body at all. And they also um, really don't have many, much calorie impact either. Um, and then we've also got things called an extra. Now, extras come in handy when you want to have a little hot chocolate or maybe that uh, diet lemonade at Chick-fil-A because it's not, even though it's diet, it's not zero calorie or maybe a little cheese dip at the Mexican restaurant with whatever other approved thing. Those extras come in handy on for those reasons. And then you could do a snack, okay? So if you did three meals, freebies, an extra and a snack every day, that's really six eating episodes. And to me, that looks like grazing. And it looks like that to Travis as well. And I think that we can all see that where that would come from. But see, cows were made with, I thought it, they had four stomachs. I need to look this up. Travis said too. But anyway, um, but we don't have that many stomachs, okay? Cows graze, we don't graze, okay? So we just want to stop grazing. It's harming our body. It's hurting our metabolism. It's hurting our digestive system. So if you had three meals, freebies, an extra and a snack in a day, guess what that is? That's a perfect day. As long as you also had your water, wrote it down, you did everything that was approved in a way that um, controlled insulin and you portion controlled everything, that's still a perfect day. Might you have better results if you did three meals and just freebies? Yeah. Might you have better results if you did three meals and then you just had an extra, but no freebies, no snack? Yeah. Would you have even better results if you just did three eating episodes in a day? Yeah. Okay. But I also want to point out to you that one day you may have three eating episodes. Maybe the next day you have three eating episodes and some freebies. Now, you're trying to continue to advance in your uh ability and knowledge and determination and all of that. I want to tell you everything that you can do because I want you to be successful. And as you continue to be successful, as you continue to participate in the ongoing nutrition education that Shibboleth is, you can decide for yourself those little things that you want to cut out. All right. Um, I personally live just kind of regular Shibboleth and it works for me and um, it's great. So this is all about timing, but let's go back. How many, I'm going to ask you some questions. Y'all get ready to type. How many calories are in a pound of fat? Thirty five hundred. Thank you, Kathy. Yep, thirty five hundred. So let's look. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. Let's look at this where it says in moments of mental weakness, you can utilize freebies and extra or a snack. And you can have all of them in a day with your three meals. Not saying that's the best, but it's still approved. Let's say that you eat so many freebies that they eventually add up to like just 30 calories because these things aren't really hurting you. Um, an extra, let's say that your extra is 70 calories. Well, 70, 30 is 100. 
And let's say that you do a snack that's 200. None of our snacks that are approved are over 200. That's 300 calories. That's 300 random calories that you really don't need in a day. If you divide 300 into 3,500, it's 11.67. You're slowing yourself down by losing a pound of fat by 11.67 days. So really, it just depends on how quickly you want to get there. Do you want to get on the interstate and drive to the beach on the interstate, or are you taking the scenic route to get to the beach? Just depends on how quickly you want to get there, and you want to keep those things in mind. Okay, now we are going to talk about all the, what I call the basics of a properly combined meal. How do you learn how to do combinations? I think it's easy, and I want you to think it's easy too. If you have any questions while I'm going over any of this, please make sure that you ask, okay? So there are seven categories of food. And when I say food, I'm typically meaning uh, whole foods, um, but there are things that are packaged in the grocery store that like, like an Olay Extreme Wellness High Fiber Tortilla, we consider that a fibrous carb because of the makeup of the food. So I'm talking chicken breast and green beans and broccoli, but also there's some packaged foods that, that fall into these categories. But all, of, all foods respond differently in your body. So we put foods into their categories based on how they respond in your body. So there's just seven categories of food, seven. So you need to know that. And I think it's important enough to remember the numbers and their abbreviation and their heading. So we're going to go over that. So anytime you see a one or the letters LP, that's a lean protein. Lean proteins have all of your amino acids that you need. They are the building blocks of life. Lean protein keeps you full. It is important that you get enough lean protein. Category two, or FC, is your fibrous carbs. Those are where you're gonna get lots of great fiber from, and they do complement this lean protein very nicely, as well as other foods. And we'll hit in just a second what kind of foods are in there. Category three, or EC, is an energy carb. Energy carbs bring a little bit more of an insulin release, but these energy carbs, see anything that's approved as an energy carb in Shibboleth is not going to hurt you if it is eaten properly. But those super simple carbs like chips and cookies and things like that, unless they're made in a way that has enough protein in them, they are not on Shibola. That, that would be a holiday, okay? But energy carbs are those carbs where you, you get energy from them, but they also bring an insulin release, so you have to treat them carefully. We're going to go over that. Number four, or PF, is protein plus fat. This is a great protein, just like this lean protein. It just has fat in it, where this one really doesn't have any fat. If it does, it's very negligible. Number five, or FR, is fruit. It's also known as, and you may see it on some of our documents, as AC, which is an antioxidant carb. Antioxidant carb. Fruit's great for you. It's got phytonutrients and those micronutrients. It's very, very good. But it does bring a little bit more of an insulin release. So therefore, you have to treat fruit properly. And now you remember, I said that you have to, one of the differences between weight loss mode and maintenance mode is how you eat fruit. We're going to hit that in just a second and even more of that tomorrow night. But just kind of keep that in mind. Number six, or SF, is superfood. Superfood, now this is important, I'm going to ask you this tomorrow night. A food qualifies to be a superfood if it has all four macronutrients in it. Now on planet Shibboleth, we consider water a macronutrient, where most other people, when they're talking about macronutrients, they're talking about protein and carbs and fat. We also consider water a macronutrient. Guess what else? It's the most valuable and important macronutrient, and it's zero calorie. Yay! Okay, so um, a superfood has water, protein, carbs, and fat in it. And shellfish, which is number seven, or SHF, is really just a lean protein. I'm going to ask you that tomorrow night, too. 
So I kind of look at it as the bookends here. You've got your lean protein over here on this end. You've got your shellfish here on this end. They're both lean proteins. Shellfish, because of biblical reasons and medical reasons, some people do not want to eat shellfish. So it just got pulled off of the lean protein category. Now all your fish is in lean protein, but all your shellfish is in the shellfish category. I also want to make sure that you understand that even if it doesn't have a shell, but it swims in the ocean and it's not a fish, let me just use octopus as an example, it's still in the shellfish category, okay? So it doesn't have to have a shell to be in shellfish. It's just anything that's not a fish that lives in water that you'd wanna eat, okay? So you've got category one and category seven. So anytime somebody says, oh, you need a lean protein with that, it could be anything from category one or category seven. Now, category one, that's where your egg whites are, chicken breast, 96% lean ground meat, turkey breast, things like that. Fibrous carbs, that's where your, your cruciferous vegetables are, your broccoli, green beans, cauliflower, asparagus, those types of things. But this is where people get really, really excited. We have over 60 approved bread or bread type items right here in the fibrous carb category. So that's a good thing. We've got to make the, the, the lifestyle practical, sustainable, and fun, right? Energy carbs, this is where all of your potatoes are. Your, most of your lighter colored beans are here. All of your peas are here. Um, grits, corn, those types of things. Protein plus fat, this is where your whole eggs are. This is all where steak is or any other meat that's a little bit fattier. Fruit, all fruits there. Superfood, this is where you've got your avocados, uh, most of your darker colored beans. This is also where you find your nut butters, your nuts and seeds. And I already talked about shellfish. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna talk about um, the foods that you could eat all by themselves. They don't even have to be combined at all. So there are five. There are five of these seven, and I'm gonna ask this tomorrow night if you're taking notes. There are five of these sevens that you do not have to eat combined at all. So lean protein, fibrous carbs, protein plus fat, superfood, and shellfish. You could eat those alone and just consider that a properly combined meal, even though you didn't combine anything, you did control insulin. So you can do all five of those by themselves. So it was number three and number five that we skipped over. You do not want to eat them by themselves. Now I'm gonna talk about a little caveat on the fruit. For your entire lifestyle, live in Shibboleth, you're never gonna wanna eat an energy carb by itself. Whether you're in weight loss mode or maintenance mode, you always properly combine an energy carb. And I'll talk about what that looks like. But here's that difference on the fruit. When you are in a weight loss mode, you must combine fruit properly. When you get into maintenance mode, you can, you can have a meal where you've properly combined fruit, but if you wanted to, you could also have a serving of fruit as a snack. So there's another way to get fruit in if you're that fruit lover. So you can eat it a little bit differently once you get into maintenance, it's that simple. Okay, so let's have, I'm gonna talk about what the fastest fat burning combination is. And the fastest fat burning combination, we call exercise on a plate. I don't know about you, and if you're watching on Facebook, if you prefer exercise on a plate to exercise, give me some hearts, because I, I want to like to exercise, I really do, but I don't. So I prefer exercise on a plate. So lean protein and fibrous carb combined together is exercise on a plate. If you also combine that, with what we call MCT oil, which is one of our approved cooking oils, that makes it the fastest fat burning combination. The reason that we call this exercise on a plate is just, so let's say this lean protein was 250 calories, and let's say the fibrous carbs that you ate were 50 calories, and so you had a meal that was like 300 calories. 
Do you realize that the breaking down of these foods, the protein in this and the fiber in this, takes about that many calories? You can spend an hour on the art machine and not even burn almost 300 calories. You can do that breaking this food down right here. So that's why it's called exercise on a plate. I love that. But if you want to make it the fastest fat burning meal, you would also add the MCT oil. We'll hit that in a second. Let's look at this energy carb. Now remember, this is one of them I said you cannot eat by itself. I have my brain trained as to the ones that I must be very careful with. Energy carb is one of them. So anytime I think, oh, I really want some potatoes, I'm gonna say, ding, 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 I must pair those potatoes properly. So potatoes, maybe you'll do a quarter of a cup. See, that might be what you do in weight loss is about a quarter of a cup. Um, I would put it about right here where my fingers are. So if you wanna use that visual. So about a quarter of a cup of potatoes or lima beans or corn, whatever you wanna do that comes from that category. It must be combined with a one and a two. So that's a must and an and. It must be combined with a one and a two or a seven and a two because that's also a lean protein. So what that might look like is you get a quarter of a cup of some potatoes. You put maybe some broccoli right here. You don't want to use your thumbs out, sorry. Uh, broccoli right here and your lean protein source right here. You put that all underneath your hands. You put that down. If you can't see your food sticking out from uh, underneath your hands, you've portion controlled, and I'm gonna tell you what happens when you eat that meal. This right here is what made the difference for me. This is so scientific. If you eat that potato, it is going to bring a little bit of an insulin release. Actually, everything that you eat brings a little bit of an insulin release, but depending on what type of food it is, it brings more of one. Well, the potato brings more of an insulin release, but what you've done, now that you know this success system, now that you know all about combinations and what insulin is, is the insulin is a hormone. Insulin is a hormone that is focused on fat storage. It does come out to serve a purpose and its purpose is to control your blood sugar. But it's like a dog who goes out into the yard and sees a squirrel and it goes, the other way. So as soon as that insulin comes out, if you've got that combined with fat, it's going to go grab the fat. We're going to hit an example of that in just a second. But right now, that insulin comes out to deal with those potatoes. But you knew this, and so you, you ate it with chicken breast and broccoli. The protein in the chicken breast and the fiber in the broccoli help to neutralize the insulin release that came out because of the potatoes. And there's no fat in that meal. So there was no fat for the insulin that did come out to get collected and stored. This is good news because we're eating great foods. We're eating foods we already like. We just make sure that we combine them in the right way. Now, let's look at fruit because it has to be combined properly too until you get into maintenance. So let's say that you want to have some berries for breakfast. Berries are actually the best for weight loss. So if we'll just talk about maybe a half a cup of berries. So let's say you're gonna do a half a cup of berries. You might wanna do an egg white spinach omelet because egg whites would be your lean protein, spinach would be your fibrous carbs. So you eat the berries and they do have the lowest glycemic index. That's why they are the best for weight loss. But you eat the berries, and then the protein in the egg whites and the fiber in the spinach of that egg white spinach omelet are going to help neutralize the insulin release that came from whatever fruit you chose to eat. Let's say that you do some Greek low fat yogurt and maybe you have, I'm going to throw a piece of bread in there. Maybe you have one slice of Sara Lee 45 calorie delightful bread with some fruit. Um, and we're going to talk about hemp products tomorrow, but hemp products, the hemp flakes and hemp powder can make a difference in that as well. And so that would be a great meal. Let's say you're having a cookout at your house and you wanna have hamburgers, hot dogs, and you're gonna have watermelon. Well, you could do a half a cup of watermelon. You can even have a 96% lean ground beef patty with a category two fibrous carb bun. And what would happen is, because there's enough protein in the 96% lean ground beef patty, and there's enough fiber in that particular uh, 
category two bun, it would neutralize the insulin release that came from the watermelon. So it's scientific and, you know, over time, hey, I love Ellen gave me a heart over there. Um, it's scientific and over time, you will figure out all the little meals that you like to eat. So you just want to keep a running total, I mean, not a running total, but a running list of the foods that you like to eat. So let's have a look real quick at category four. You can eat category four by itself. Now you may see in some of the uh, Facebook groups, people ask that question and some people say no, that you can't. Well, that's because that was a previous teaching and Travis has now say that you can have it by itself. What that looks like to me is this. You wake up in the morning and you're just gonna make yourself some whole eggs, some scrambled whole eggs. There you go. There's a protein plus fat by itself. There's nothing wrong with that. I utilize it a lot because I go to a lot of luncheons for these different business associations and events and things that I do. Um, and if they have their luncheon spread out there and I look and it's like pasta or it's potatoes or, you know, it's all these things that are going to bring the fat bus. And if it's not a day that I'm choosing to have a holiday, I want to stay perfect. I'll just go grab the meat. Uh, which is a protein plus fat, and we'll get into that in just a second. Um, I'll go eat the meat all by itself. Well, I didn't bring the fat bus because I didn't bring an insulin release, so I'm still good. Optimally, though, you would pair this protein plus fat with a category two fibrous carb. So what that might look like is if you have steak, um, you could put it with broccoli, green beans, side salad, something like that. Just to let you know too, that if you wanted some, like some surf and turf, let's say you want some steak and some lobster, you could do that because it's just adding more protein to that. You still would use the one hand for your protein source. So it might look like your lobster bits here and your, um, your steak there. You could even do steak and chicken, but we're gonna go over like some uh, ounces tomorrow night if you're interested in knowing ounces, but I just use my hand and don't go more than protein, more than a protein source of that. Um, but let's talk about that classic plate of a steak and a baked potato because this is the this this is the example that just went oh my goodness I cannot do that anymore and if you want to also equate that to hamburger and fries it'll it, it's the same thing so you eat the steak and that steak is a good protein and the fat that's in that steak is not a bad fat. It's a, it's a God-made fat, it's not a man-made fat, and our body actually needs fat lipids for certain functions and things like that. So eating that steak, there's no problem with it. Uh, the problem is when you paired it with the baked potato, because the baked potato brings more of an insulin release. And if you're eating in a restaurant, those baked potatoes are the size of people's heads. They're so huge. So you're eating this potato, it wasn't a, controlled portion, you know, like a quarter of a cup or anything like that, it was big. So insulin comes out. Well, the insulin is coming out to regulate the blood sugar increase that happened with you eating the potato. But guess what? It goes, squirrel, there's fat out here. I'm gonna go collect that fat. That's why we call it the fat bus. I've started using that squirrel example, but Travis calls it the fat bus. And the fat bus, you know, like the, a bus, a bus's job is to pick up children or people and take them to their destination. The fat bus goes around and picks up fat lipids and takes it to their destination. The destination is butt and gut, and we do not want it there. So we do not want to eat that combination together. Have I eaten that combination together since being on Planet Shibboli? Yes, but it was a holiday, and I knew what I was doing. But you can do that on a holiday. You know, the thing is, if we're doing in, if we're doing what's right 80% of the time, we're going to have success. And I had a friend that I just interviewed two weeks ago, and she says, you know, you've always heard everything in moderation. Shibboleth helps me measure that moderation. I just thought that was a brilliant statement. Brilliant statement. So it's things that we want to just make sure that uh, we're getting doing the right thing 80% or more of the time. Um, I also love the fact that if you have that steak and a baked potato meal, it just takes two perfect days to get back into efficient fat burning and you're back into efficient fat burning. So there's no reason to ever give up 
um, in Shibboleth because you just get right back to doing perfect and you get back into EFB. So it's a lifestyle. It's a system that you put into place. Um, but while we're talking about this protein plus fat, I'm going to tell you there's three categories that you do not eat it with. So this will be a question for tomorrow night. You do not eat protein plus fats with energy carbs, which we just discussed, <coughs> excuse me, fruit or superfood. So that's your three, your five or six. You just don't eat that. And the reason being is because threes, fives and sixes bring more of an insulin release. You don't eat protein plus fat with something that brings more of an insulin release. And if you want to just boil it down to really super simple, you don't eat carbs with fat and you don't eat fat with carbs. It's that easy. And then once you've learned these categories, do you see this little chart right here? This chart right here is your combination chart. So this red one is super fast. And this um, yellow one is just a little bit slower. And this blue one is often called our lifestyle column because um, it will bring good results. If this is not currently what you're doing, but these other two are faster. So if you see where it says one LP, that doesn't mean just one lean protein. That's the category number and then the abbreviation. And then this is a lean protein cooked in MCT oil. This is a lean protein with a fibrous carb. This is a lean protein with a fibrous carb cooked in MCT oil. I also want to let you know that you can have more than one fibrous carb on your plate. So let's say that you want to do um, chicken breast, broccoli, and green beans. You can do that. Chicken breast would be your protein source under one hand. Your broccoli and green beans would need to fit under this one hand, but you can have that. Uh, it happens a lot when people make wraps and sandwiches and things like that. Seven shellfish you could eat by itself and so forth. So you can see how you just look at this combination chart. Now this combination chart is just your first seven to 10 days kind of to get you started. There is a more advanced combination chart, which is my favorite, but I want you to know that um, we we'll just kind of start off with this one. If you want to look at the advanced one, it's in the blue links that are right above your fast track videos. So nobody's trying to hide it from you. It's just, we don't want things to be overwhelming. Um, if you are a person that tends to get overwhelmed a little bit e uh, easily. So we'll just start with this. See where this says phase one? I want you to know that phase one is really the foundation of the program. Once you, you're, you do phase one really forever. Phase two is where we teach you how to eat frozen meals, things from the middle aisles of the grocery store. So it's not that you're phasing into better things, it's just opening up more options if you choose to use those. Okay, so phase one is the foundation forever. And so that's just an overview of this and we are gonna move along. Tomorrow night's whole hour is on this. It's on this. And we're going to be talking about the foods that would be in that category. Okay, let's recap this. Category one plus two plus MCT or seven plus two plus MCT, which is lean protein, fibrous carb, shellfish, fibrous carb are the fastest fat burning combinations. If you want to eat a three, which is an energy carb, or a five, which is fruit, you must eat it with a lean protein and a fibrous carb, because they're gonna help neutralize the insulin release that came from that. I always give this one as what you don't eat with it. You don't eat protein plus fats with energy carbs, fruit, or superfoods. And then let's look at point number four, all meat at a restaurant, and that's that luncheon example I was given to, all meat, when you don't cook it, has to be considered a category four because you don't know what oil they cooked it in. So let's say they took a chicken breast, which is a lean protein, but they cooked it in an unapproved oil. They've cooked fat into it, so it's just now considered a protein plus fat because they put fat into it. So just to keep you safe, all meat at a restaurant must be considered a category four. Now let's talk about approved cooking oils. Our number one approved cooking oil is a MCT oil, 100% MCT oil. MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride. Now I'm gonna go ahead and read these out, but then I'm gonna come back to this MCT oil because this is important information. The second approved cooking oil would be coconut oil. It's actually 60% MCTs. Ghee butter, spelled G-H-E-E, 
not to be confused with a meal replacement that's out there called G butter, okay? But this is butter, it's just been clarified. Um, and it, there's 40% MCTs in there once it's been clarified. Hemp oil is something else you can use. I don't really have much experience with that. Uh, and then zero calorie cooking spray, you know, like Pam or any of those zero calorie cooking sprays. So all of these are approved cooking oils. But when we said earlier that um, you, if you add MCT oil to your lean protein and your fibrous carb, that it makes us the fastest fat burning meal, that's because medium chain triglycerides have a little bit of a thermogenic effect. And so they help, they, it, it, they burn up so quickly that it has a heating up effect and it burns a few little extra calories. Now, with you hearing me say that bit of information, what I don't want you to hear me say is that you need to somehow get in your MCT oil. There's no getting in MCT oil. MCT oil, remember how I said earlier, nutrition is situational. You may hear out there, and there's a lot of noise out there in the health and wellness um, industry. You may hear people talking about different ways they use MCT oil. They may not be in the same nutritional situation as you are. So med medium chain triglyceride is good for the purposes that we're using it, but you do not need to take it as a supplement. You do not make bulletproof coffee with it and you don't put it in any shakes and things like that. So we use it for three reasons, cooking in a pot or a pan, recipes when it's called for an oil, when an oil is called for, and making salad dressings with. Those are the three reasons that you could use MCT oil. MCT oil and the type of MCT oil that you buy is very important. Shibolus does not require that you buy anything from us to do this program. Everything that you need comes from your local grocery store. But if you are gonna buy something from us, I would highly recommend our MCT oil. The reason being is, well one, it has 30 less calories per tablespoon than all the other ones I've seen. Ours has also been optimized for cooking purposes, and we're only using it for cooking purposes. So I would highly recommend that when it's called Zero Drag. Zero Drag is the name of it. And so when you're looking though for an MCT oil, you want to make sure that the ingredients say 100% medium chain triglycerides. You don't want it to say any other thing. It needs to say 100% medium chain triglycerides as the ingredient label. Look and make sure that it's not emulsified because if it's emulsified, you, do, you don't want to cook with it and we're using it for the purpose of cooking. So you can also read on there and see if it says do not cook with this, then you wouldn't want that one. Um, so let me explain to you though, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. A medium chain triglyceride burns up like that and it has almost no propensity to be stored on your body as fat. Let's compare that to the oils that we've been using because we didn't know. Olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, those are long chain triglycerides. They burn very, very, very slowly, and they have a great propensity to be stored on the body as fat because they're burning slowly. And most of us, if you're like me, are not out there on the ARC trainer, running a marathon, even getting in our steps every day. I mean, so we're not burning those off. So we need something that's an alternative that burns quicker, and that's medium chain triglycerides. Just say hallelujah right now. I promise you, this is one of the secrets. Just changing over your oil is, makes a huge difference. So you wanna make sure that you use medium chain triglyceride. Now, somebody asked me a great question one night. Why would I choose to use a medium chain triglyceride versus a zero calorie cooking spray where there's no calories in this? Well, reason being is this does up here, it, it, it's thermogenic and it burns up fast. So it creates a little heat. And when you create a little bit of heat, it helps to burn a few extra calories. So you're gonna get that little extra calorie burn there. But you don't ever even have to use medium chain triglyceride. We're just saying if you use oil to use medium chain triglyceride. But medium chain triglyceride also has a muscle preserving effect and a metabolism building effect. So that's another reason that you would want to see that. Um, so in weight loss mode, or actually in any mode, anytime you're restricting calories, you have got to make sure that you are um, 
preserving your muscles. And this has a muscle preserving effect. Um, Mary, you're asking where you can see this recorded. This video is in the video library, the yellow tab in your account. Um, once you click on the yellow tab, you click on the word topics. And in topics, this is called the fast track one hour videos. There's two of those. So that's where you'd be able to see that. And then we're gonna hit this EFB. It takes two perfect Shibboleth days following the shield. And then you get into what we call EFB. You wanna string as many efficient fat burning days together as you can, okay? Because that's gonna create that success for you. And we are striving for those perfect days, but planned or unplanned, a holiday is coming. And I love this about Shibboleth. I love it. It created a more balanced life for me. And I'm thankful for that. So after a holiday, it takes two perfect days to get back into EFB. So you have in your, you have a journal in your account. And if you're journaling the type of day every day, it creates these little icons in your timing chart that makes a great visual for you. You want to make sure that you say what type of day you're having every day so that you can have that visual, okay? When we're in EFB, this is important. When we are in EFB, our body will burn fat. Fat is really just stored energy. So our body's gonna use that. They're gonna, it's gonna burn fat, stored energy, for the energy that we need rather than accessing unapproved oils or starchy or sugary carbs. If we've been given our body unapproved oils and starch and unapproved starchy and sugary carbs, those are easily accessible sources of energy, just like a human being usually takes the path of least resistance. Our body, when it needs energy, if it has unapproved oils or those other uh, more harmful carbs in there, or carbs in the not, not in the right combination, it's gonna access those first for its energy. But if we take those away and we aren't giving our body that, it's gonna have to access stored energy and that's where we burn fat. We want our body to have to access that stored energy. I had a lady ask me one night, she goes, I mean, one day, why am I so tired all the time? And she goes, she'd just gotten started. I said, because it's actually hard work for your body to access that fat, that stored energy and burn it off. So I want to tell you that you are doing the right thing. Let that, the fact that you're tired right now, be an encouragement that it's working, that it's working. And she lost like seven or eight pounds the first week. So, so that was great. So just keep that in mind. And we are almost coming to a close. We're going to recap what the fat bus is. The fat bus is insulin. Insulin is a hormone. It helps with um, blood sugar spikes. It, it's there to regulate blood sugar, but when it sees fat lipids, it's gonna, fat, it's gonna store them. And it's gonna store them for up to 48 hours. So if insulin is running around in your body all the time and you're eating fat too, there's really no way for you to ever efficiently burn it off. So that's very important that you understand this now. In, uh, insulin also increases appetite. So if you um, have had a holiday and you just like, you're never satisfied on that holiday, that insulin is messing with you. It really is. And then let's just say the next day that you get back to your perfect days, but you feel a little bit extra hungry for some reason, just get over it and have your two perfect days because once you get into that EFB groove of those perfect days, guess what? You're not feeling that. You're feeling great and you're really not that hungry. So you just want to keep in mind that insulin does that have that effect. And just as a recap, after the fat bus has been on its rounds, it does take two perfect days to get us back into EFB. And if you're journaling your days, your, your, your timing chart will be able to show you that. And I'm gonna tell you how to um, learn about that in just a second. Now, you might be asking, what am I gonna eat this week? I just want you to simply go into the food library in your account and make a list of seven lean proteins that you might like to eat and seven fibrous carbs that you might like to eat. That's category one or seven or category two. And you're gonna, if you make a list of seven and a list of seven, you take your pencil or your pen and just like you were in elementary school, you say, I wanna eat chicken breast with broccoli. I wanna eat 96% lean ground meat 
with cauliflower. I want to eat low fat yogurt with, you know, something else. So you see where I'm going. And if you're going to be cooking those, cook it up in MCT oil and give yourself the fastest fat burning combination. Throw in a few meal replacements for simplicity and you'll be good to go. Meal replacements actually is a large part of what I do because it just makes my life easy. And there are 10 that are my favorites that I kind of put in that announcement in the Shibola's new member fast track group. And then keep it simple, simple, simple in the beginning. And then as you continue to live this, you'll find your favorites and then you'll also find recipes that you like. And you'll be watching the Shibola uh, Silver Level Facebook group and figure out different things because people post what they eat. And you'll try it and you'll, you'll do great. Now, I want to make sure that you know about all of the resources that you have. Make sure that you are in our Facebook support groups if you are on Facebook. Um, this week, I want you to super hyper focus on the fast track group. I want you to participate in the daily posts. I will have a post come out tomorrow morning through Saturday morning. It's a pre recorded video of me showing you how to use the website. So it's my attempt to help you shorten your learning curve on using the website. It also has like your little assignment for the day. I do consider myself your Shibola instructor, your teacher. Well, when a person is learning something from a teacher, there's typically a little bit of homework. And for you to learn this new uh, lifestyle, there's going to be a little bit of homework. So just do those. They don't take long at all. In fact, the 14 little fast track videos can be watched in less than an hour. So, and then make sure that you take the test after that. So if you get ahead of it this week, just that's fine. Just take the test after so that you can earn your badge and post your badge showing that you earned it. It does encourage other people to do the same. And then watch that video daily so you can see how to use the website. Um, and then I want you to make yourself a mentor appointment. This is a very underutilized feature of your membership. We have complimentary mentor appointments anytime you need them. Now, you just book that at mentor.genbook.com, but one of the things that I want you to do is, I want you, you can go on there now, after we hop off of here, you can go on there now, and you can book that appointment, but I want you to book it for next week. I don't want you to book it for this week, because this week, I want you to focus on the fast track. I have found that when people have their getting started mentor appointment next week, your mentor has to do a lot less explaining and teaching the lifestyle to you, and y'all can have a more purposeful and productive and intelligent conversation if you do it next week. Okay, so focus in on the fast track this week. You can go ahead and make the appointment because they do, um, you know, you're, we want to make sure that you can get the appointment when you need it. So go ahead and look at that, but focus on fast track this week and then do that. And then just welcome, welcome to the Shibola family. We are here for you. And we just want to make sure that we've been where you are. And we want to make sure that you have uh, the success that you're looking for. And it is absolutely amazing. I'm so thankful that the Lord led me to Shibola. And um, I hope that y'all feel and I feel like that you will feel the same way and uh, everything. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope you've learned some things. What this is, is, in my mind, is a system. It's a success system. I filter my decisions through the shield. I do what the shield says every single day. Yes, Kathy. Kathy, I'm glad you said that. It is an answer to prayers. It really is. If you adopt it and live it and do not let anything get in your way, be determined. I like the word resolute. Resolute is my word. Admirably, purposeful, determined, and unwavering. And you can do it because you're going to be eating good foods, controlling insulin. You're going to feel so much better. Y'all have made a great decision, and I want you to, to assure you of that. All right. You're welcome, Glenda. I will see y'all tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure that you registered. The links for the registrations are in the groups and in the text if I sent that text, if you are getting my texts yet. Hey, Linda. You're welcome, Linda. Um, if you are not getting my texts, all you have to do is type the word Kimmy, K-I-M-M-Y, to the text number 31996. Just text Kimmy 
to 31996. I go live every morning in the seven o'clock hour. I do not text about that because people are asleep. Okay. <laughs> Y'all have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow night. Let us know if you have any questions. Yes, we are, Kim. Yes. So, Kim, when you come in there, you're going to come through the coffee shop. There's those two double doors. Just come through there, turn on the first hall, and you would just walk straight into us. Yes, we're in there. Come see us. Sherry is in there, and we are open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., and on Saturdays, 10 to 2. Yes, yes, you can get MCT oil there. If you are a person who likes to bake and you have flour and bisquick at your house, you also want to pick up some carb quick, Kim, because that is a category two fibers carb. Yep. I have a little setup in the front that's called like your Chevolar starter kit. And Kim, it, I don't know if you've asked to be a member of the Kennesaw Chevolar Facebook group, but I did a video in there that you might want to watch about those products. Anybody, wherever you live, you can still be a member of the Kennesaw Shibboleth Facebook group. It, it's, it's open to anybody. Um, it's just, you might see more things about the classes that are in Kennesaw in there. Just, um, probably, probably Kim. I'll make sure you're in there. Okay, y'all have a great night. Bye.